Hello, this is Jesse, and in this tutorial, we're going to be using Pymo. Now, in the objectives of this tutorial, we're going to create a picture using Pymo of different protein structures. We're going to use Pymo plugins and scripts, the plugin to create a Ramachandran plot, and scripts to color residues based off of hydrophobicity and color charge residues. We're also going to use Pymo to get the distance and color contacts or polar contacts between residues and or ligands. And at the very end, we're gonna do homology modeling with the Swiss model web interface. And we're going to be showing cysteine bonds with Pymol and highlighting domains of that homology model. So first you'll need to download Pymol. You can go, you can use this URL here to download the educational use only Pymol build. And then I provide some Pymo links, tutorial links for basic commands, or just the basics of using Pymo, and then I have a, a link to command line basics, and then a cheat sheet for Pymo. So first we're going to go over creating pictures. So I already have a Pymo instance open here, and I'm going to go to the PDB databank. The protein databank and it stores coordinate files of different biological structures. And the first picture that we're going to create is a T, it's called THC synthase or tetrahydrocannabinolic acid synthase from Cannabis Sativa. And we can use the command. We can use in the command line of Pymol to import the PDB file. So here, remember the accession number is 3VTE. So in Pymol, I'm going to type in fetch space 3VTE. And we have our protein imported here. And notice how there's these red crosses here. Red X's, we can remove that. These are waters, and I can you can also see them on the sequence itself. Click on S at the bottom right, and then use the scroll bar here to scroll all the way to the right, and you'll see ligands. You'll see the NAG, these the NAG ligand and the FAD ligand. The FAD is the coenzyme here, and we can remove all these waters here, these red O's. So we'll just go to remove, type in remove space solvent. And here the solvent is gone. The water is gone. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and we can use ray, tra ray trace mode. There's there's one, two, and three modes that we can set to set the color quality different. So here in this tutorial, in this example, I'm going to use ray trace mode three. So set space ray underscore trace underscore mode and then comma space three so ray trace three and you notice how the quality of the color changed slightly you get some more shadowing and you have this a little bit more appealing look at least to me it looks more appealing and there's different there's different modes you can set it set mode one or two or three here's two and then here's one, okay? But I like mode three the best. You can change it to whatever you want. And then here we can click on A, click on preset, and you can click all these different preset options. I'm gonna click on pretty and it changes the color based off of different sections of the protein. From here, we can actually set the tracing of the protein to a certain color. In this example, I use set ray trace color to magenta. Enter. You don't really notice it now, but when I use ray and then I give the how many pixels are going to be for the height and width. It's going to 
show the actual tracing of the protein better than what it was before. And then now, so this is how the picture would be, and you see this, the black squares and the gray squares. This is just showing that it's going to be on a opaque background, or tra I mean a transparent background. So I can place it over any image and you'll only see the protein, or the image itself, no black background like before. And then to save the protein, or to save the picture, we can use, you can copy and paste this for, for yourself here. I already have the code. Mo all this code, all this right here is already, all the code is already in here, or the commands. You can just copy and paste them one at a time. So here we have P and G, and we can take away a file. We can go to practice, or we can go to example, or whatever you want to name the file. I already have this saved, but that's how you'd create a file. You just put PNG, so it's going to be saved as a PNG, and then you can give it the name, and then comma, and then DPI 300. And then here's the picture I created, just like this one. And if you don't like the way it's orientated, you can switch the orientation, or you can click reset, orient, and then get a different position if you want. So that's a picture of the THC synthase protein. Next we can use beta defense in. And same thing, this is the accession number. So we're just going to type in, I can remove this protein here. So if I click on the protein on the right, right here, the name of it, it can disappear and reappear. But I'm going to remove it first and then type in fetch TMJK. And then now I have a different structure here. Okay, now I can show the surface. Show surface, and here's the surface of this. Right, and now if I don't like the, if I want to remove that trace mode, I can just click ray trace mode set to one or zero. Okay, set to one or zero, and now I can change the color. I can change it to red or blue whatever color you want, and you can also manually change the color here. Click where the C is at here, and you can go to colors and have different options. Go to red, and I go to TV red. Okay, next you can actually use some of the code I already put here, or the commands, and copy paste it into the command line. And I'm going to set the transparency to 0.4. So the and here I give you say the closer to zero, the less transparent the surface will be. Closer to one, the more transparent the surface will be. So here I set the surface to be transparent, so I can see the cartoon representation of the protein through the surface of the protein. And then I can set the ray, the image size, how many pixels, so we have rate 2400 and 2000, and then you can also save the picture here, PNG, and you can name it, and then comma DPI, and then here I have the picture um, inserted into the document for y'all. Okay, so now we're going to be going over the Raman Shannon plot, so this is going to be plugins here. So I'm going to remove everything real quick, reinitialize, fetch, 3VTE, and then remove solvent. Okay, so here, we're going to start off with Raman Shannon plot. Here, I already have the URL for you, so you can go here, copy, paste, Dinoplot, Pymo plugin. Click on downloads, and then click on download here, and then you're going to copy and paste this whole, all of this right here. Copy paste the whole, all the words, all the text here. Copy and paste it into a text file or into a notepad, and then save. Right here, you're going to save this with a 
dot py extension. So you can call this Rama or whatever you want, Rama Shannon. This code is going to create a Rama Shannon plot for you. So I named it, I already have it saved, but I named it as Rama dot py. Okay, you have need to have this dot py at the end. Okay, so once you save this, I already have it saved, you need to import it into PyMole. So we go back to PyMole. We click Plugin, Plugin Manager, go to Install New Plugin, choose from File, and then find where you saved that file. The, For instance, I'll be looking for Rama, because I have the code that we just looked at saved as Rama. So in this case, I need to look for the file where I have it saved. And I have this saved as Rama, so I click here, OK. I already have this installed, so I can just cancel out of here. You should go ahead and do the installation. Once it's installed, type in Rama and then the name of the protein. In this case, it's 3VTE because that's the name. That's what Pymol names it as. So we need to say Rama and then the, the accession number. And then here's the coordinate files. So we can look and compare. Here appears to be a lot of beta sheets in this region. There appears to be a lot of beta sheets. And we can also, neat thing about this is we can move particular points, residues around. Probably something you can't do in most Ramachandran plots. Okay, so that's the Ramachandran plot and that's the plugin. In this tutorial, I think I show you with a different protein. Yeah, I show you with the TMJK. Okay, next, we're going to use the color H script to color the hydrophobic residues on a color scale from red being the most hydrophobic and white being the least hydrophobic or no hydrophobic at, or not being hydrophobic at all. So here I give you the URL to the wiki page. I want to use Chrome. Okay, so we're going to go here. Color Let me get out of here. Color H. We're going to copy the code, just like we did in the with the Raman Shadam code. Copy this. Copy and save as .py. Now, if you ever see from this case where from Pymol import, or you know this is. It's going to tell you that you're going to need to save as a.py extension. Okay, so .py from Pymol. This is Python. It's a programming language, but we're going to save this. You don't need to know what the code actually does, or the actual details of the code, but know the code that will be used to create and color hydro the, pro the residues based off their hydrophobicity. Okay, so you're going to color, um, save it as .py. I already have it saved right here. And notice I have .py as the extension. Next, we'll go to Pymol. And we'll type in run because it's a py because it's a .py extension. It's not a, it's not a plugin, so we don't need to go to the plugin manager, but it is a script, so we need to run it first and then use the command to run it, okay? And the command to run it, to get it to color what we wanted to color is color H. So but first we need to run it. So if in Windows, if I go to color and name, if I just type in the file name, it gives me the, the name of the file, that file itself, and I can copy the full path. So where it's located in my, com, in my file system. So here it is, here's the full path. This is telling Pymol where that file was at. It's located in the users. It's located in Jesse folder. 
in OneDrive, Documents, Python, Pymol, and then here's a text file right here. I'm going to click Run. Once I click Run, I can actually use the command now, color H. You know, color based off of hydrophobicity. Now, what if I don't want these ligands here? What, the, what if I want them gone? I can click here, and I can click select each one. And I can go to hide. And now they are gone. And I don't have those in the way. Maybe you want them, maybe you don't. Now, what I can do is I can go to show surface. And here, we have the surface of the protein. And we can see which sides are more hydrophobic, what's more hydrophilic. We get a better sense on the surface, right? Looks like a lot of there's a lot, there's a lot of hydrophobic residues on the inside here. Look on the inside of this pocket, and on the outside there tends to be less hydrophobic residues compared to the inside. I mean we have these pure just white regions, just hydrophilic, right? So that's color H. There's also another option for charged residues. So it's the same thing if you ever have a new script, or you ever see a new script, you just go to the PyMol wiki, or if you find one, you just need to download the script. Save it to a text file, so copy and paste, just like we've been doing. Copy and paste it, put a notepad or whatever will allow you to save it as a text file or a .py extension or .py file. File and save as. This time it's going to be charged. I name it charge.txt and I save it as with a .txt extension because there's no, I don't see from pymol import command okay I don't see any from Pymol or anything I just see normal commands that we use all the time like hide orient show color select show color okay but if you do read the code if you do read the commands you can see that we're gonna be selecting and we're gonna name the selection and we're gonna be naming the positive residues we're gonna selecting the positive residues and coloring them a blue color and then we're gonna color the negative residues red okay I already have this saved but if you don't know what it actually means just know that you can take this file save it as a text file and then you can run it but this time it's different it's because it's not saved as dot dot py it's saved as dot txt we're going to run it with the at symbol in front of it. And then again, you're going to need to supply the path to it unless you're already in the same directory. Copy full path, paste, enter, and then it colored. So if I remember correctly, the blue are the positive residues and the red are the negative residues. Okay. And you can select the sequence. And here you can see we have positive residues is blue. Right? We have lysine, lysine, um, histidine, and then the negative residues, spartic acid, glutamic acid. Okay. So that's another plugin, right? And we can st we can do you can do this on other proteins whatever proteins you want to do okay in your homework you might be asked you might give me you might be given a protein structure and you might be asked to highlight the hydrophobic residues and you can do that using various plugins or not various plugins but this plugin in particular that I showed you show charge residues or if I ask hey show me the hydrophobic residues but I want to see the surface of the protein then you could use this example over here up top where I color the pro where I use the plugin to color the hydrophobic and non-hydrophobic residues and color it once I get it colored I show the surface 
and I create a picture and that would be the answer. So next we're going to be calculating the distance between two different residues. So I'm going to type color red. Actually I'm going to change the color to pretty. Okay, now let's say just for demonstration purposes, I want to look at the distance between this amino acid over here this amino acid and this amino acid. Well what I can do is I can click on wizard, click on measurement, click on distances, click on distances again, and then all I need to do is just click on the residue I'm interested in. So that's I just put a dot on this residue and then I put a dot on this residue and then I get a distance between them. I get a I get this yellow dotted line and then I get 5.3. So 5.3 is the angstroms. And maybe I want to look at the distance between this residue and or this atom on the ligand and then with the coenzyme FAD and then I can look at this get the distance from here 9.9 .9. I mean 8.9 my bad so in your homework you might be asked so what's the distance from residue 306 and 326 so you can click on it and then get the distance between them well not that way you would actually have to you have to use done measurements and you want to remove the measurements delete 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 so if I want to get from this residue this residue you could highlight them find them where they're highlighted or maybe you want to look at the color maybe you want to get you want to color these so I can put color as red. So now I just highlighted them. I can easily visualize them and I can see them from the other sequences. Maybe this wouldn't be a good indication. Maybe what if they happen to be over here? Right? Then maybe you want to color the whole thing as blue or yellow. Right? And then click the residues that you're interested in. and then calculate their distance. Just like I showed you before. Right, look like it's 18.4 angstroms from those two residues. So I hope that can help you with your homework. You're gonna be given specific residues. So you just need to find the, the corresponding number here and then to make it easier, you just highlight them, color them, and then just click, click the get to the measurement wizard, and then you'll be able to calculate distances. And delete all measurements, done, and we're done with that. So that's getting distances between two different residues. So now, we're going to be showing polar contacts and binding sites with FAD. So or with the FAD coenzyme. So we're going to stick with this protein. I'm going to remove this. Alright, we don't need, I'm going to keep this here actually. I'm going to color this red. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to show you where you can find the binding site of a protein. So if you go to the PDB file here and you click on the go to Uniproc KB right here and it gives you the binding sites with the FAD molecule with the coenzyme FAD so we have the binding site, binding site here, 114, 176 go to Pymol and then we can type in select and then we're going to name, we're going to put the name of our selection right 
after the space of select. So select space binding site one, com comma, and then we're gonna select the resi or the residue. You have to put resi 14, and it selects this histidine. So this should be histidine, histidine right here, and then we can do the same thing for the other residue. Now we have two of them highlighted, and what we can do is we can click hide everything, spa or hide space everything, and then we can go to the right, click on FAD, go to show as sticks, show as sticks. Okay, and then maybe we can color this. And better color so we get the actual elements here. Okay, good. Now what we can do is show these sites right here. We can show them and show them. So what we can do is we can go to show. Well, we can just simply just do it as here, right here. Show as sticks. You can also do this through the command line. Show as sticks. And then here's our residues. We have histidine and cysteine. Now we could also change the color as this. And if we want to change the color, color, spectrum, rainbow, color, rainbow. Okay. So here, this is actually a cysteine bond. Right here, let me zoom in. Right here. This is actually a cysteine bond. So we click on show disulfides sticks. This would be the cysteine bond here. And then this right here would be the actual covalent bond. And we can also label these. Label, and we can put the name. Label the residues, cysteine, and histidine. Histidine, and it gives us the number here. So similar with how I did it here. Okay. So that's showing the binding site, okay? And if you want to look at more of the interaction, if you wanted to look at around the binding sites, then what you need to do is you can simply highlight a section and then go to show as sticks. Right, and you can color these a different selection too, but you can see how maybe where it fits where it fits into the protein pocket All right and here's the cysteine show us sticks and then you can color these different colors, whatever you want. But in this case, we just showed the residues that are actually binding, which are these residues. These are the binding sites for the FAD. We have this histidine and this. Well, that we have this histidine and this cysteine, and then we have the disulfide bond right here. Okay. Next is polar contacts. So let's go to show. Cartoon, and we're going to reset. I'm going to hide sticks, and then I'm going to go to click on the A next to the actual name of the protein, the entire protein. I'm going to preset. I'm going to click on ligands. Now it's going to change the view and how the protein is represented and visualized. 
As you notice, you can see the NAG ligands here on the side. You can see their covalent interaction, those hydrogen bonds. And then we can zoom in here and look at the covalent interactions with the ligand with FAD and the residues. So here we have the oxygens here, these oxygens, this particular atom, and then the hydrogen bonds binding to the protein. Right. Okay, so, well in this case, we can look at different observations here. Look at the oxygen here and the nitrogen here. Here we have the oxygen here and the nitrogen here. Here we have, I believe this is a phosphate group. And then binding to different atoms here, nitrogen, nitrogen. And then this looks like a, I said oxygen right here, but this right here, you see the double. This is just one oxygen with double bonded oxygen. This is one bonded oxygen with the hydrogen on it. So hydroxyl group. So this is what you can be looking at when you're looking at the polar contacts with the residue, with the protein, and the ligand. Okay, finally we're going to be going over homology modeling. So this is where you have a protein that maybe the protein you're interested in does not have a PDB coordinate file. So what we could do is we could create a homology model. And what you can do is just oh, use this URL I have here for you. And you take this protein sequence and what it's going to do is you want to search against a database of similar sequences that have determined uh, x-ray or NMR structures and then try to predict and use those structures that are similar to your use those sequences that are similar similar to yours to create a predicted structure which is where it gets the homology modeling name from because you're using similar structures to construct a structure of your protein. So we're going to search for templates. Once you search for templates, you'll get back, like I said, similar structures or similar sequences that have determined structures through NMR or X-ray clusterography. I've already run this today. You'll get back the templates like this. And then you have the results, okay? Usually you want to go with a higher identity score, like 100. And then getting low in the 30s and 20s. It could be a good template or could not. It's just hard. You could always use multiple of them and then see, you develop the model and then see what the results come out. You can verify them yourselves, but usually you want to go with higher templates, like around the 50% or the 50, 50 range. But once you choose them, it's like in this case, I chose Drosomycin, and then I did use a lower template model for a second one. I think I used the alpha like toxin here, 32.61. With Then the method is x ray clusterography with 1.2 angstroms. And you just click you just click build models. Once you select your models, click build models, and then after the model is run, you'll get your results back. And then you have some of the statistics back to determine and tell you if the if the if the results are good or not. So here we can click on what the Q mean is, and you can read through the Q mean. 
Okay, and then it also has the global mean right here. But these results are pretty good. They also go with the residue number, the comparison. You would really want the number to be right in between, closer to the zero right here. It's exactly where it's close, where it's sitting around that point. Then you have the predicted local similarity target. And the similarity is actually pretty high. It's floating around the 8, I'd say. For each particular residue number right here. And then it's giving you the global quality estimate. And you kind of, you want the estimate to be right in this white, closer to the white region. Here you see the red and the blue. You want it closer to the white region, which is fitting there. And notice how the similarity is 100%. So we got good thumbs up here. We have high scores, everything's, but we go to this lower, this lower one. Notice here it's out of, it's not that close to the zero right here. It's not where we would we would like it to be. It's, and then we have other instances here where you see that it's compared to the other region up on the top we just looked at. It's further away from the white right, the white region, which it we we would like it to be closer to this white region right here. And then we have a lower GMQE score, and we have a lower Q mean score. Okay. And notice the identity score is much lower. Their sequence identity is much lower. But we can take these models and we can visualize them in PyMole, right? And maybe we can align them. So here we take this model and take this model. I already saved it, but this is how you're going to save it. Go to struct, go to model, and go to PDB format, and it'll have the down. You can download it here, and then you can save it to your computer. And then same thing with this one. I'm not going to mess with this one. I'm going to just go with these two, the top one and the last one. PDB format. And I can save it. Name it what you want. So here, I already have it. I already have it here. Then I'm going to type in the load. Because this time I'm not fetching it from the PDB file. I'm going to be getting the file and get their location in my computer's file system. So, I'm going to go to properties. I'm going to go to location. And then just type in the name. PDB. Press enter. So here's the first sequence. And then there is also is another way of doing, going about checking where you are, where PyMole is sitting in the in the folder. So I type in ls and press enter. This is where I'm at right now. I can change, I can travel in PyMole to the desktop. So I can go to change directory and I can I can type in the cd command. cd means change directory or change to different folders. And I type the tilde here and press enter. And now I'm in the user's jesse folder, but I want to go to desktop, so I list videos, I need to go to OneDrive, change directory, OneDrive, now I want to go to desktop here, and I list here, and then notice I have the dross Drosomycin, and then I have the Droso2. So now I can just type in load Dros2, and I have it here. So I now have two of the proteins, and I can look at both of them here. So now I have two proteins. I have Drosomycin, and then I have the Drosomycin, well, they're both homology models. One was using the actual protein sequence or the actual 100% identity. 
the quarry that was identical to my protein. And then I have this other homology model that was generated using the quarry sequence. Um, the quarry sequence that matched with the alpha toxin. So the alpha toxin back here, yes, a description alpha like toxin. And then here I use drosomycin, which is the protein that we're looking at. So it's obvious that we get 100% identity. But here, we can actually align them. Type in the line, dross, and then dross2, and then it aligns them. And it gives me the root mean square deviation. The lower the better. Uh, here we got 1.842, so it's the average, the average distance between two residues. Okay, over here it's pretty similar. Over here it's pretty similar, but here we get on the outside where the loops are. And it appears not to be, the red. they seem to veer off. Okay, now I'm going to show you what if you wanted to highlight or look at cysteine bonds. So there's two ways you can do this. One way is if we're looking at this one right here, DROS2, we can go to show, we can go to disulfide bonds, and go to sticks, and it will show our disulfide bonds here. We have four disulfide bonds, and if you actually look at the peptide itself in the description, you read upon it, um, the cysteine bonds, this right here is a motif, cysteine stabilized alpha beta motif. So here we have these alpha beta sheet, alpha helix and this beta sheet being stabilized by these cysteine bonds. So it's the cysteine stabilized alpha beta motif. Now, what if we want to look at only a certain section? We want to highlight, we want to show that, look, sec these residues from residue a to residue B is the domain. This case, we can actually go to drosomycin in the format at Uniprot, drosomycin, click on the entry here, and then we can go to Interpro, Family and Domains, click on Interpro, view protein in Interpro. And I just show one example, okay? In your homework, you might be given another protein that has multiple domains. We might get another, another protein that has not only one domain. But, I'm, but in this case, I'm looking at not one, okay? And then I'm looking at this section of not one, position 35 through 68. So 35 through 68. Well, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to name the selection not one. I'm going to go resi 35 through 68. And then I can color not one red. Oh. Color red not So here we have oh not, not 65 through 68, it's 35 68 35 through 68 and then we'll color it we will color it Here we have the colored residues. Okay, maybe yellow doesn't look too good. We can change it. To green. Okay, and then from there, color it back to red. Bam, okay. So here we have our highlighted domain. Click on the sequence. And so from 
68 is our not domain. So that's homology modeling. That's highlighting domains. We were able to show, show cysteine bonds. We were able to show contacts between ligands, show the binding sites, able to calculate distances between residues, show positively charged or positively negatively charged or overall charged residues, and then able to show and highlight hydrophobic and hydrophilic residues, and then use Raman Sharnin plot and create a Raman Sharnin plot and then make create pictures with Pymol. So I hope this is helpful and this is the end of the tutorial.